Welcome back to the Balance at Hotel Entertainment. Good morning, Niger Show. Now, we don't need to talk, say, um, for our casual guests in the house today, we will talk about dress code, particularly in the corporate organization. Now, just on Tuesday, I will be here, say, Goldman Sachs, uh, Goldman Sachs uh, Group Incorporated, this one, an investment bank, for instance, uh, we abroad, and they, they, them, they, everybody is serving them very well for the kind of corporate dress sense and dress style where they take do their work. You, do, you will always see their staff and their workers in well cut, well tailored suits, ties, shirts, and for the ladies, pa uh, pants suits, skirt suits, but always very corporate and very organized looking. Now on Tuesday last this week, they will not come and talk. Say they won't relax the dress sense uh, for the organization. And of course, you know that many a times when organizations like Goldman Sachs decide say they want to do something. So many other organizations where they under them to um, go follow suit. Now, as I talk to they want to relax their dress sense. So they want to make their staff begin to dress down. Say conservatively, but they're going to dress down. They feel no necessarily begin to wear suit anymore. Now, we want to ask, say, how this one will take affect organizations coming into Ibodo, Nigeria, where we know, say, our banks, our financial houses, our corporate organizations too, their staff, they dress this way. Now, to follow us, this course, this particular one, uh, we get a very casual guest in the house. Actually, they work with Poise. Uh, uh, her name is Noye Kalibechi. And we know, say, Poise, then they totally about dressing well, looking smart, uh, etiquette. et about etiquette <laughs> particularly. And of course, mm -hmm. etiquette also has to do with dressing. Noye, good morning. Good and thank morning. you for joining us. Good morning. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, first of all, because say you're an etiquette um, coach, uh, and a person where they come outside preach about ethics in the work in the workspace, what do you think about dress code in the office space, especially how some companies, they actually make them be very, very strict? Okay. Um, talking about dress code in the workspace, for a very long time, you know, as far as we've had the corporate um, world, you know, organizations, part of the policy is to define the dress code and say, okay, based on what we do, based on the kind of image you want to project, this is how you're expected to dress. So they expect that you dress formally to work. And there are so many benefits attached and there are reasons why they need you to dress formally to work. Because they don't want you to come in jeans, like I always say to people sometimes, you know how when you come to the workplace, and like I said, it depends on the kind of workplace you're talking about. Mm. There are some organizations, they don't need to be dressed formally based on what they do. But you have organizations, especially the financial sector, where you're expected to dress formally because there's a lot of credibility and trust that is attached to the way you're dressed. And that's why it is required that you dress formally to work. So they have reasons for saying we want you to dress this way because beyond dressing is not just putting on your clothes and coming to work, you're communicating. Mm. It's a non-verbal communication. I like we always say that 60% of communication is non-verbal. So what, what you put on to work has a lot to do with your productivity and how you function at work. I say, for instance, I know how it can be so easy for you on jeans and t-shirts. You know, you might just feel like, I want to climb this table, mm -hmm. and then you would do that easily. Mm -hmm. But when you're formally dressed, there's a restriction. There's something that says, mm, look, I'm very formal here, and then the way I comport myself and the way I carry myself will be seen. Because, you know, because the way we dress affects our thinking mm. and the way we act. So organizations will always do that. We want you to be formally dressed, especially those in financial sector, like I said. Okay, now you, you mentioned something, you say the way you dress affects the way you think, your, your thinking, uh, you know, the way you function as well. But still we get some organizations where we say, um, people day, for example, people day where we say, for the same organization, some people dress with tie and a suit or just tie and shirt. And mm -hmm. then some people day will still wear jeans and shirt. But then if you measure their productivity, it's still the same thing, you know, affect, it, it, not, it doesn't seem to affect the way then they, you know. So my question now is, say, this thing, shouldn't I just mindset thing, or not the way people don't they perceive them, or truly, truly, it they affect the way your productivity take reach? Ah, well, there's no study, but we have studies really, mm -hmm. but they are not in um, public um, domain mm -hmm. to say this is the effect of um, your dress code in the workplace that, okay. But the question I also ask people, do you, think you are not doing your best or you're mm. not performing well because you have your tie and your shirts on. Because it's both ways, you look at it, okay, do, do, because there's a survey too, there's a research that said, do you think you perform better with your jeans and your t-shirts? The answer might not be, <laughs> it's relative, it might not be absolutely yes or no. But you see, there are things we say to people, it's the mindset because 
You feel, we know how we say, your, your, the way you dress, it affects your thinking. There's this feeling, and that feeling of wanting to do more comes from the way you appear. Mm. I don't know, your, like we say, your clothes reveal so much about you. It affects everything about you. So there's a feeling of competence, capability, can, that can also come from the way you dress. No, you, and there are things we say, we say to people you need to consider when you, you dress. For instance, you say to them, okay, you need to consider um, your, your line of work, your corporate culture, your audience. So you want to dress down. Who are your audience? Who are you going to meet? Who are the people? Who are your audience? Who are the people you're going to relate with? So there are things you consider before you say, okay, let me dress this way. I actually like when you talk, and because it's not true, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes when I when I know say I dress well, and then you go see me, they ask any job. You want me to do something for you? So I'm actually I, I see myself very very happy and in a way some productive when I dress well and I know that I look good. I just mm. want me person give me work me they tell me say you look good. You get what I mean? But now let's talk about um, your client's perception. Now you feel say the reason why a lot of companies get the strict um, laws as regards to your dressing now because of say make the client perceive this company as a serious company or as company where you know what that they do exactly yes because if for instance you're going to pitch you want business from a particular company and then you're going there and then you guys all go in jeans and in your t-shirt and maybe some people in shorts because you have a very relaxed dress code. What impression do you think you're going to create in the mind of your client? That's the question people should ask. That's what I say, consider your line of work. So you go in your jeans and t-shirts and then they look at you because we have, it actually happened to a particular company where, you know, and it's an IT firm. So they felt, we are IT guys, why should we do all the, nobody, nobody's saying do all the tie and all of that. So you went there. And then they looked at you and said, ah, these people don't really look capable. You see, it's perception. Mm. It's all perception. So they look at you and feel like, these guys don't look capable enough. And it's not like you are not capable. You are capable. But how do you communicate that based on the impression you are creating? Mm. So that's very important. Remember how we say first impression, last an impression. So you want to make the right impression and not the wrong one. So before you go and they say, oh, sorry, you know what? You guys are good, but you didn't come across like someone who would deliver on this job. And that's just based on perception, really. Because we say perception is reality. Mm -hmm. My perception is my reality. Your perception is your reality. So I can people easily conclude, make judgments easily based on what they can see. So before you go ahead to say, hey, but we are qualified, and then they are saying to themselves, you guys don't look like you're qualified. Okay. But now the question I want to ask is, this perception thing where you don't talk now, can't it be argued, say, uh, it is a mindset thing? Because, for example, uh, Goldman Sachs, now everybody knows, say, a strong uh, investment bank, then be. they don't deliver over the years, over decades, over centuries. And now they say, say they want to dress down. Imagine say they begin to wear short sneakers, short, shorts, you know, they, their ladies begin to wear jeans and all of that. Perception, will the perception still change? Because already you know, say, these people they deliver. For example, you go to a bank, you know, say this bank, they deliver, but they don't decide to say, now we want to change our dress code. I'll give an example. Uh, a certain bank on Friday, some of our banks for here, on Fridays, they, they allow their staff to wear uh, native attires, of course, because of the climate yes. where we did. You know, mm. that still doesn't change, or do you think that would change the perception of the customers, whether new or existing customers? Because you know, say, already these people, they deliver. So it's not, in this case, don't be function of perception. You don't already know so they deliver, regardless of what they wear. Is this also going to affect people's mind, mentality? Not, not exactly. Mm. Now you mentioned Goldman Sachs, and then we, know, we all know Goldman Sachs, mm. and just like we know other banks that have delivered in this part. For them, if you, if you, if you read through the notice that was um, given to staff mm. about their dress down policy, they, in the statement, they use the word, they, they, you know, urge their staff to use good judgment. Mm, yes. Interesting. So, yes. So you, when you know you're going to meet a client and you're going to make an impression, that's part of the good judgment mm. that you're going to meet. That you have been delivering consistently, and then you are a very strong brand out there, and people know what you can do. So we are also saying yes. We have relaxed your dress code. It doesn't have to be tie every day. But what if you have a meeting? What if you are going to pitch? 
and you know that an impression that you're going to create there is very important, what you need to do, use that good judgment. Meaning, if I'm going there, I am not going to go in jeans. And if I decide to say, I'm going to go in jeans, whatever I want to put on top or whatever, the way I come across is also very important. So that part of the good judgment is also very, very you know, important. So they, of course, they have delivered, like you said, but remember when you're making impression, like, like I said earlier, consider your audience. And for different, for them, if they have, they have different clients, there are some clients that would even feel very relaxed with them that they came in jeans and t-shirts. And there are other organizations they know they are going to pitch to or they want business from that they can't go in jeans. So that's the place of the, that's the good judgments. There's a caveat there. Use your good judgments. Now let's talk about, um, sorry, we'll link them to a gender kind of um, problem. We know say some ladies in some organization that they actually suffer a lot of strict dress rules. Now, I remember in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, or 15, the Lagos State government, they actually come outside talk, say, ladies for inside the ministry, may they not wear any skirts where they actually go um, above the knees, and also make it not day tight, make their dress, make their hand not the show. So there were a lot of rules on ground, and not just Lagos State government, even some companies too, they actually get those rules on ground as regards to ladies and their dressing. You feel, say, all those rules, on ground for ladies, do you think it's acceptable? And you feel, say, ladies in their own way, suppose use good judgment in dressing? You know, they say every society, our culture, and in this kind of society, our culture reflects in our dressing. So if government is bringing that kind of policy, you might not want to fault government too much. But now I'm talking about gender. Why should it be women? That's the question. Why should you, how, what do you have to say women don't wear skirts? How about guys who, who sag, guys who wear tight fit and also, so I, I don't think it should be about female alone. So if you want to, you should make, it should be balanced. So if you're dishing out dress code for, for the guys, you should also dish, dish out dress code, uh, sorry, for the ladies, you should also do the same for the guys. And like I said, it's the society we are in. So if we're saying, but I don't think it should be really, mm -hmm. we're talking about evolving trends, you know. So I understand if I work with government, like you know that if you're in the north, mm. okay, no matter with all the formal dressing we're talking about, you know, you still see the ladies dressed in the northern, you know, with the wrapper or the skirts, and then they still cover and all of that. So that's a bit sensitive, mm -hmm. and you don't want to go into that area. But places like Lagos and any other part of um, Nigeria, our culture would always show a bit. And even when we talk about etiquette, we say um, there's a bit of um, culture in our etiquette. So if the gov if government is saying this is how we want you to dress, I, it, really there's no problem. But don't be so strict as say ladies don't wear skirt. And I don't like the idea that when you see some ladies dress in a particular way, they are harassed. Yes. It shouldn't in be. In some cases they have been harassed. So. And you can't come to the office because except if you know, that's the place of the good judgment too, that you leave your house and you are half naked, mm. then people can begin to say, oh no, you are offending our sensibilities here. Yeah. You know, that, at that point, okay, no problem. But everybody should know, well, not, let me not, it's an assumption to, to think that everybody should know, but we all know what decent dressing is. So I don't think it's for government to start saying, mm -hmm. and it has to be this way, don't dress this way, don't wear any dress that does not have, um, I don't think um, it's um, entirely, you know, nice to say that to ladies. Mm -hmm. it, it should be balanced mm -hmm. for both. All right. Um, now, good thing you mentioned culture because my next question, uh, now culture, I won't bring in. Now, we know say largely dressing is a component of culture. And in this part of the world, uh, we hold on to culture very, very strongly and very tightly. Now, already, as I mentioned some time ago, uh, earlier, um, we get different organizations where we say Fridays, largely because, and I believe say, the origin of this now because Fridays are Muslim faithful, uh, they, they go mosque. So most of them, they dress in native attires to suit. Even though we still get people where they dress corporately, they go mosque, they, mm. they make themselves comfortable sure. for their prayers. But now, when we say Fridays, we get people where they dress in native attire. Imagine if uh, we don't decide to, okay, because dressing our component of culture, of our own culture here, we don't decide to say, we won't change the narrative. Maybe say, make we, they dress according to our own culture on a daily, Monday through Friday, through Saturday, and those where they work on Sunday as well. Yeah. How you feel, say, this one will affect, or first of all, you think, say, it will affect productivity. That's one. Now, secondly, how you feel, say, it will affect the workplace, particularly the corporate workspace? Okay. Dress down Fridays in Nigeria had been there for a very long time. Mm. 
But even the financial sector, the banks, at some point had to define what their native or uh, dress down for Fridays, especially if you want to dress in native. I know some banks that were very specific and they said, look, if you're going to dress, you, you know, dress down, there are certain colors. So that your native wears, you're making it. That's what I say, when you're shopping for your wardrobe, you consider your line of work. So you want to wear native. There are certain colors you must wear. And there is a particular way you must do it, except if that company, that particular day is a cultural day. But if it is not a cultural day, and then you're bringing the culture part to it, and you're saying, because I am Igbo, or I am Yoruba, or I am Hausa, so I'm going to work today. What I need to tie is two wrapper, and my gele. And then the guy wears Agbada, you know, or the Igbo traditional way of, um, you know. You can't entirely do that to certain office. Maybe in your kind of office, you can decide to dress like that and come to work. But you and I know that if you are a teller, for instance, in the bank, and you decide to wear Iruan Buba, or you decide to wear your Agbada, and you're supposed to be attending to customers on your desk, how would you look? Do you think you will really feel good? Do you think it will be very tidy? Or don't you think that you'll be clumsy in your movement attending to clients on that particular day? The truth is that this is Nigeria. If really we want to actually hold our culture tight, nothing wrong in us wearing our native, we want to wear our Iru and Muba. And now because say, we don't accept the white man kind of dressing, mm. that's now why a Nigerian where they work for bank go wear Iru and Buba will go to look at many now. Well, I agree with you, too, mm. on that. But you see, like I, I also say, I, I want to commend our designers here in Nigeria. Yes. Because, you Involving. know, if you look at how it has evolved, someone is wearing a nice shirt, what they call, is it a senator kind of wear? You know, it looks very, very, a little formal or semi-formal, mm. kind of. And you can do anything with it. Like I said, but we do not have a national dress code yet. Nigeria is a hatred. Yes, that's so. If we all agree that we have a national dress code that says you tie your two wrapper to work, it's fine. But how we tie it, we remember, you know, remember it's how you tie it. The round buba that you're tying to work is okay. And that's why I'm bringing the designers in because you need to see what people have done with Ankara, Ankara dresses, Ankara skirts, Ankara shirts, and every other thing that we wear. It has been, you know, modified to look like semi-formal. And the people look good. People can work with them easily in the office. But I'm still saying we do not entirely have a national dress code yet. Now, just before you go, we get just one minute. Um, I just want me to answer this last question. Now, at the um, employee's attitude to work, you know, person where we say you know, they preach about professional ethics. Now, talking about the, where we did, we did for inside Lagos, where we say traffic, they also hold people from going, getting to work early. Which advice you get for employees where we say, now they are trademarked to they come to work late? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know what it is, like something that is so very funny, I saw, it, that was towards the end of last year when the traffic mm. in Lagos was really bad. They said, okay, how to survive Lagos traffic? Mm -hmm. Get plane, whatever, <laughs> wake up like 3 a.m. <laughs> or go to work around 1 p.m. or something, 1 a.m. and all of that. Mm -hmm. You see, that sounds funny, but the truth is, if you know you are in Lagos and you stay very far from your workplace, of course, it's non-negotiable, leave early. Wake up early. I know when you say to talk to some young people in the office, they say, look, my area, I can't leave that place 5 a.m. It's too yeah. early, people are robbed, you know, when you leave too early. But you see, organizations too, in relaxing dress code, we have organizations here in Lagos, Nigeria, people that are relaxing on their resumption time. time. So maybe employers still want to consider, okay, if you can't make it eight o'clock, can you resume for nine? We have people doing that. So you resume for nine, some will even resume for 10, and you close on a, a, a particular time. So it doesn't really have to be that 8 a.m. all the time. Mm -hmm. You can resume earlier for those who think you can be in the office seven or do you want to resume for nine you can be in the office for nine as long as you come on time and it's all about considering the employees somehow very true. Yes. Very true. Mm. thank you very much say your entire time we said we studio to talk about um dress thank code you. and then you just end i'm talking about um the time to resume work to some employers too need to actually consider where their workers they come from while mm. some employees need to consider say you have to get to work early, early yes thank you very much thank you so much Lawrence. you don't discuss the dress code in the office to enjoy more of this our will get videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page 
you go love her. 